Wear your safety glasses at all times. Take off all jewelry. Do not wear loose clothing. And make sure you have a comfortable working zone around the machine. Like any machine, we need to understand the components before the operation. The miter saw has a fence and a table. These two will serve as guides to make sure your material doesn't move off the course while cutting. The sliding power miter saw has a locking knob for the slide rails. Loosen the knob by turning counterclockwise. This will let the saw slide against the rails and give you a greater distance in its width to cut a wider piece of material. The handle, regardless if you're left-handed or right-handed, is directly above the saw blade. Keep your hands safe. There's also the power trigger right on the inside of the handle. So before you operate and line up your material, you want to make sure that your finger is not on the trigger. At the end of the saw, there's a miter lock. It is a handle that you can use to swing different miters. You would have to loosen it and then use your finger on the bottom miter latch, lift up, and you'll be able to rotate the machine. You want to make sure your finger is still on the miter latch. You can drop it and it will lock in to every specific degree. You do not need to lock the miter latch unless it's an odd degree. Currently it's set at 15 degrees. If I move it and I want to cut something at 5 degrees, it could move during the operation. So I want to make sure that I lock the miter lock down. There are two operations that you'll be completing on the sliding power miter saw. You'll be cross cutting, cutting across the material's grain, and you'll also be mitering, cutting the material at an angle. For any material that's less than three inches, you can lock the slide down, and when you cut, We'll just be going up and down. For any material larger than three inches, you want to keep the slides loose. Keep the lock disengaged so you have a wider cut. As you're facing the saw on the left side, you're going to see a small pin. You want to push the saw down and control the machine as you pull the pin out and then you can lift it up. In storage, you want to put it down, push the pin in, then you can let go. Push down, pull the pin out, bring the blade up and set up the machine. When cutting on the sliding power miter saw, you want to make sure that you have one face flat to lay flat on the table, one edge flat to lie flat against the fence. Marking your material, you can either use the tri-square or the combination square. Rolling out to your distance, and I'm going to mark 16 inches with the tape measure. Make sure you get an accurate cut. Put your combination square or tri-square up to the edge and mark your line. One. When cutting on the sliding power miter saw, you want to make sure that your material is up tight against the fence. If you have it away, and I can safely show you this because the machine is in fact unplugged, the rotation of the blade is going towards the fence. The force of the blade is going to keep the material tight against the fence anyway. So if you have it away a little bit, it's going to want to pull tight against the fence. Want to make sure it stays tight against the table, tight against the fence. For operation procedure three, we want to make sure that we have 
one hand on the material and one hand on the handle to control both the machine and the material. We also want to make sure that our hand is six inches away. For this particular miter saw, that's about here, right around this bevel, just past this hole, right in this area. So anything past that is acceptable. Another safety measure when talking about the sliding power miter saw is to make sure you never cross your arms. When I say cross your arms, one hand over here and one hand on the handle. Your arms in the path of the blade. That goes with small pieces of stock. We never want to hold small pieces of stock either way with either hand because that's not six inches away. Here's another example of having my arms crossed. This is no no, this is a no no. Operation procedure four is cutting the material down to the line, just to the right side of the line. Make sure that I keep my distance, in this case, of 16 inches. Now the machine is still unplugged. When I plug the machine in, you will see a red laser light. Once you get used to the machine, you can measure with a tape measure, just put the mark that you need, and the laser will do the rest. When I bring this down, what I'm going to do is not have the blade in contact with the material, but I am going to pull the power trigger. So currently, I do have it pulled. I am going to go through the material. Once I get through the material, I want to keep this saw down, but I want to let go of the power trigger. Let the blade wind down. And the reason why we do that, there will be a scrap piece over here. If we bring the saw up while it's running with that scrap piece, that scrap piece could go flying into the distance and possibly hit someone. You want to make sure, once again, bring it down through the material, keep it down, finger off the power trigger, keep it down until the blade stops. Then bring the saw up. I'm going to plug the machine in. be able to see the laser light. So it's barely noticeable, but it's a non-damaging laser light that helps you line up your material. Once again, line up the material, control, one hand on the material, one hand on the handle, finger on the power trigger. Turn it on. Through the material, I'm still keeping the, ma the machine down. Finger off the power trigger. Now I can safely move it up. There's that scrap piece if you would have brought the saw up. That scrap piece could have kicked. Remove the material. Mitering is the same way. I'm gonna Loosen the miter lock, flick the miter latch, hold the miter latch, and I'm going to go to 45 degrees. I can see the laser light lined up right up with my corner. Scrap on the right and on the left. Six inches away, same process. Wait till the blade stops, bring it up, and there's your miter. Now if I have a board that's wider than three inches, I need to loosen, by turning counterclockwise, the lock for the slide rail. That'll give me the distance necessary to cut a wider piece. This process is a little different. Instead of holding the power trigger, pulling the machine down, what I want to do is bring out the saw first, hold the power trigger, bring it down, and push through the material all the way past behind the fence. 
If I brought it down and tried to bring it forward, recall the rotation of the blade is going that way. The saw, if I tried to pull it out and cut, would jump. So I want to make sure I'm all the way out, fired up, down, and go through the material. Out. Same process as before. Let go of the power trigger. Wait till the blade stops, bring the machine up, remove the material.